Today, we're gonna to go through an example using Gretel to label data on its way to Elasticsearch. We can use this to identify personal data, PII, credentials, or other um, named entity recognition features like addresses and locations uh, for log data or documents that we're sending to Elasticsearch. Stepping through our blog here, we see a reference to a blueprint. A blueprint is a uh, notebook, in this case, a Python notebook that walks through a use case applying Gretel's APIs uh, to uh, label data on the way to Elasticsearch. You can view these blueprints directly on GitHub. We'll also go ahead and follow this um, quick CLI here, which will go ahead and allow us to shortcut the process, flow in the repository locally, and launch a notebook. Go ahead and fire up a terminal. You need to make sure you have Jupyter installed to run this. So let's go a quick pip install if you haven't done this already. From there, we will cut and paste in our uh, command from the uh, the blog, which will go ahead and clone the Gretel AI blueprint repository locally and then launch uh, a notebook. From here, we'll navigate to Gretel and then we'll go to the load named entity recognition to Elasticsearch notebook and launch it. The requirements for this notebook uh, require that we have Docker installed. So we'll use Docker Desktop to fire up an Elasticsearch server and Kibana uh, server locally inside a container, which we use to upload and label data to, simulating an Elasticsearch server running within your own environment. Go ahead and click Run. Went ahead and launched our two different containers. I already had cached. Next thing we'll do is go ahead and install the underlying client library, so the Gradle clients and Elasticsearch. After that, we need to go ahead and put in our Gretel API key. This allows our notebook to talk to the cloud service. To navigate to the Gretel cloud service, you can start by going to Gretel AI, click sign in. You can also go to console.gretel.cloud. Go ahead and select your name, select an API key, copy the API key, and let's go back to the blueprint. Place that in. Next thing we're going to do is um, using our Project credentials here, we are going to access a sample data project from the Gretel Cloud. This can easily be replaced with a CSV, a JSON, a pandas data frame, whatever you like to use locally. Um, and you can figure out how to do that very quickly using our API docs. For simplicity, we're going to use a customer bike order data set that we, uh, we use often. Uh, it's a popular data set on Kaggle, has lots of PII in it to explore. So here we can see it, it uh, downloaded to uh, the, the cloud, downloaded the private packages, and now it is accessing um, 8,000 records from this project feed uh, locally that we will use for labeling. What happens when we upload uh, data, which like we just did to a temporary project, is the first step is that Gretel will go ahead and label that content. Um, Essentially, it's applying named entity recognition, regular expression matching, other types of, uh, of uh, custom detectors we have to label every type of field that can find within the data. Um, here, we want to take a subset of what Gretel's returning. So Gretel does not actually change the record. All it really does is apply a, append a second object to it, which is the metadata that will give you character offsets and types of entities that are found per, per field. Um, we're going to take essentially this raw record that we sent to Elasticsearch and we're going to append the different types of entities we detected, um, as you can see in these fields. So go ahead and run this. You can see these are grouped into score high, score medium, and score low. Um, essentially, that is a confidence metric we have for each entity. So if we had a person name with a high confidence of finding it, for example, it said something like, my name is Alex, um, we would have a high confidence um, of that find. It would be grouped here. We have a low confidence, something that might look, for example, like a zip code, but all by itself without any type of supporting metadata, it will be um, ranked as a, as a low score. So we've done that. We'll go ahead and next we're going to fire up Elasticsearch. We're going to take labeled uh, data from our project streams. We're going to iterate across our project stream and upload that data directly to Elasticsearch. Next here, uh, we're going to do a quick aggregation query that helps you kind of explore the uh, labeled data that you see within Elasticsearch. So it's been labeled by the Gretel service um, after we uploaded the, uh, the sample project data. It's been sent to Elasticsearch. We'll go ahead and query Elasticsearch and see what we can learn about that data. Still uploading data to Elasticsearch. We'll go ahead and give this a minute and let it finish. So here you can see it uploaded 8,000 records to the local Elasticsearch server. Um, and we queried it, asking it for uh, matching uh, things within London, for example. 
and we can see both the uh, individual records that were returned. And we can also see the, um, the data that's been appended by Credle. So here we can see high confidence that it found a birthday, gender, location, and date. The last um, cell here in the notebook, um, go ahead and closes the, uh, the project down. So it deletes everything from both uh, Gretel and then also from, uh, from our Elasticsearch instance. We don't wanna do that yet, we wanna explore it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the, go ahead and launch Elasticsearch locally. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna have to add our index pattern to Elasticsearch. So we ought to be able to Go to discover, we'll define an index pattern from there. So it looks like it automatically detected our index pattern for the NER blueprint. You can see that here, we have 8,000 hits that have been located. Let's go ahead and take a look at this data. So we created a uh, index called NER blueprint that we uploaded our bike data to. And here you can see the different fields that existed inside of that bike data, the city that it came from, the customer ID, some other really kind of cool stuff. And then the question is, okay, Gretel, what did you find when you went through here? And we can see high confidence detection of locations, dates, zip codes, birth dates, genders, and phone numbers. Um, and uh, so we were pretty confident in everything we found. Frequently, that's because we were able to exploit the header definition as well. For example, if you see a uh, record about last name, Ramos, here we'd be quite confident that um, we're looking at a last name. Next step you might want to do is to visualize some of this data. So let's go ahead and visualize it. Say we wanted to build a report to understand the, uh, the compliance concerns we might have around a particular index. So here we will go to visualize. Let's create our first visualization. Let's do a pie chart because everyone loves pie charts. We'll select our index, which is the Gretel in the ER blueprint. From here, we can start. See, we're starting with a blank pie chart. What we're going to do is do an aggregation very similar to what we did in the blueprint, um, just to create a visualization here. So we'll add a bucket. What we want to do here is split the splices. Time cluster there. We'll select a terms aggregation. When we select the field here. Let's go ahead and pick high confidence. We need to find the high confidence matches we had from a labeling perspective. I might have skipped over this. Score high that keyword. And we want a maximum of, let's say, 15 different enemies that we've detected ever. So here we can see uh, we've got our visualization built now. So I can see of all of the uh, 8,000 records that we processed, here we found um, in all 8,000, we found a birth date with a relatively high score. A little bit less frequency, uh, US zip code. Some of these records also had person names, so a really great way to label and get a quick visualization on the types of data you have going to Elasticsearch. Once we're done, we can go back to our notebook here and we're gonna run the last cell. What that's gonna do is take down our Elasticsearch instance, also take down our project and delete it from 